This trailer was very aggressively released. Not only is it coming a week after the Snyder Cut, and it's been a whole week of headlines, as I told you, to really charge forward instead of look backward with uh, the DCEU. That's what Warner Brothers is doing. So I think some of you are offended by that. And then also, it came out the day of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. All the other days of the week it could come out. Now Warner Brothers has come for Falcon and the Winter Soldier two weeks in a row! And the Falcon and Winter Soldier is feeling it. You know, because the show, that show is not, not particularly aggressive uh, in terms of like, oh wow moments, at least in the first two episodes. We're getting there though. Today's episode was so good. I don't see why we just can't, uh, can't all get along within Warner Brothers, with Warner Brothers and Mar you know DC and Marvel. It's just good stuff for all of us. Meanwhile, hey, Invincible's not even registering, which is a real shame because that's incredible stuff. The first three episodes are, are up. No one seems to care. Uh, just gets to, just shows you how competitive the space is becoming. But wow, a lot of you really turned on this trailer, which surprised me because so many of you were so supportive of James Gunn. You were like, "Damn it, James Gunn deserves to work. He should do whatever he wants, and we're gonna support, you know, ride or die." And so now he puts out a trailer, and a lot of you are like, "No thanks." So I think I think you guys are divided into three groups. There are the Harley Quinn fans like myself who are just so happy that she is so well done that it's just carrying the entire movie for us. I admit it. I'm totally liking this movie only for Harley Quinn. I realize it's problems, but Harley Quinn is so good, I don't care about anything else. And it's interesting because that's exactly the way she's used on the team in the comics. I can't tell you how many Suicide Squad comics I've read that have been absolutely horrible, but Harley Quinn was in them, so I bought them anyway. Then there's Snyder Cut fans who I think are just, you know, trashing this movie out of allegiance to the Snyder Cut, which I get, but I think that that's some of the criticism. And then I think there are people who were genuinely apprehensive because it's not really what they were expecting. I mean, it is very similar to David Ayer's Suicide Squad, even down to the posters. It's more that they just changed the color palette. You know, they went from day glow, uh, neon party colors uh, to primary you know, finger paint colors, really. Uh, I, to me though, I think that I can see people having that reaction if they'd only su experienced Suicide Squad through the David Ayer movie. But I have to tell you, it looks like the com upcoming Rocksteady game, very similar. And also it reminds me a lot of all the Suicide Squad comics that I've read because Harley Quinn is in them. <laughs> I mean, it's very, it's, I guess that's one of the reasons it didn't bother me that much because I'm used to reading a not so great Suicide Squad story, but just being so happy with how Harley Quinn is, you know, just seeing her there and used well. And sometimes even when she's not used well, but I'm happy that this seems to be an instance where she's used exceedingly well. So what we're gonna go, we're gonna break it down. Uh, this, you know, as I tweeted earlier this week that I heard uh, that this was coming out to play with either Godzilla vs. Kong or Mortal Kombat. As you can see, they chose Godzilla vs. Kong, and that's why I believe they put the kaiju reference in the trailer. It might not even be in the movie. There's another thing that I can see for sure that's been re-edited, so it's misleading as to how it's portrayed in the movie, which is their prerogative. That's how they edit trailers. So but I think if you're going to play in front of Godzilla vs. Kong, why not get the kaiju reference? You know, just like they put the Birds of Prey uh, teaser in front of It Chapter 2 because of the clowns, right? Now, my biggest question, if I were a studio executive with this trailer, is I'd be like, hey, James, thanks for doing this for us. We put your name all over it, so we feel we've done good. We've done right by you. His name is, like, everywhere. But I'd be like, does it really need to be rated R? Because you're limiting my audience but yet you know, I don't see any payoff for it. Like with Deadpool, you're like, you couldn't do Ryan Reynolds jokes and a lot of the violence and stuff. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of the action to be fair, but you know, you, you see Deadpool and you're like, yeah, I can see why this needs to be rated R. But having from just this trailer, I have to say, I feel that James Gunn could have gotten the exact same effect with this banter if he had done the PG th PG-13 version of the jokes. I don't think they're funny enough. And in some cases, I think they're a little uncomfortable you know, and I've seen some of you say the same, to warrant the R rating. Like, I don't see the need for that. And it's a lot of banter. I have the sneaking suspicion that the film might be overwritten, but maybe that's just this trailer. You know, it's, it's early days. But Harley Quinn is just so good. As I said, I don't really care. You know, and she drives all the traffic for this. You're gonna see her in every poster and every thumbnail for everything. Harley Quinn is the driving force of this movie. She sells the Suicide Squad comics. Uh, they recently relaunched with her not on the team, which I think was a bold and stupid move. Uh, and just like Joker, 
Harley Quinn drives the traffic of her movie, which is great. It's glad, I'm so happy to see the female version of the character doing as well as the male version of the character and on her own. So I think that's really great. I'm not, I don't know why John Cena has his own show based on this trailer. I'm not like, oh yeah, give him his own show. Uh, but I like John Cena a lot. So again, I, I, and I like that he's wearing a, um, a polo, ter- uh, um, polo shirt. <laughs> it's really funny, uh, a Lacoste polo shirt in this in this trailer. So little stuff like that. I'm like, and I like that he. Had, well, we'll go over it. He has little funny character moments that I like. All right, so here we go. Let's break it down, and I look forward to hearing your own thoughts down below. So it's Red Band, and I, again, it was just for like really like inappropriate jokes and some King Shark stuff. It didn't need to be Red Band. So they're in this funny, really like messed up. Uh, truck, which by the way, looks perfect for missions because it's got like basically no insides. And you can see all the windows have been blown out. So I think they've commandeered this tourist vehicle. I like the setting. It's very, very Suicide Squad. I love that uh, Lacoste, uh, Lacoste is like a very preppy uh, brand of polo shirt. So the fact that it's it's like something that like, uh, like, a, like a super preppy, like all American kind of guy would wear. So it's like, it's, it's very funny. I actually like Lacoste, <laughs> but I can see it being shown in this context as like a poser shirt. And I love that it's clearly way too small for him. So I, I think it's funny. I don't like that toilet seat on his head as, uh, you know, as, um, um, what is this? I keep thinking he's dead shot basically. So, uh, they're getting all ready, all furiously. You can see uh, a ragtag group in here with their crazy disguises. We'll talk about Rick Flagg's shirt when we get a better look at it. It's pretty funny. Um, so he's like, oh, why are we risking our lives? And I love that uh, Idris Elba is wearing a uh, just a tank. Like, you know, a, 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 well, I don't think a wife beater is an appropriate term anymore. We'll say he's doing a Stanley Kowals- Kowalski. I think that's great. I think it's just so perfect for this, for this mission. So they're 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 going off half cocked, um, which would be an appropriate joke, I think, and a better one for this. Uh, and yeah, I could still have the R rating. Uh, but I like this picture right here. Even here, I'm like, that's an amazing picture of Harley Quinn. She looks fantastic there. And I agree with so many of you that the red and black and the white is just that's Harley's color scheme, and they really should stop fighting it. She just looks phenomenal. She's, you know, she's different from the uh, animation version, which is almost impossible to pull off in live action. So I see the changes, but it still seems very uh, faithful to it. I I just love it so much. So uh, Waller, now this, she says, be careful out there guys, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see they're just on her for a second before they pull away. So I think that she's probably actually saying something else in this scene. Uh, Wearing light pink to work today. I love it, Waller. Uh, and now we've panned down to a different group, so which makes, I don't think they're running tandem missions. I think that this is a different part of the movie. But that's interesting, I like that. You see, that's a different group. That looks like our group that where most people are gonna die, uh, unfortunately, we'll see what happens. Maybe that's backup. Maybe they're sending backup in, we'll see. So they get out, they're like all oh, running around like chickens uh, with their heads cut off. I like that they're all like in leisure clothes, but they're wearing their helmets on top of it. I mean, it looks ridiculous. It's like so close to not working, but it's so close that the, and they still do it anyway, that to me that for makes it work. I'm like, I mean, I like John Cena's socks. I think they're funny. I mean, maybe I will like John Cena's Peacemaker show. I mean, he looks really funnily dressed. And I really have a lot of respect for John Cena that he walked around in that outfit. Uh, so they're like, and I love that Harley, this is just, and look at the look on her face and the blood dripping down from her nose. It's perfect. I mean, it's Harley. It's the best live action Harley Quinn that I've ever seen. And so I'm happy. I'm out. I'm done. Woohoo. I'm so excited. So she's like, what are you doing? They're like, we're going to rescue. And it was a really good plan too. Uh, well, darn it. Let's talk, talk for a minute here about Waller. I like that Waller has her little safe space where she just tells everybody what to do. There's a better shot of it later, but this is the widest shot. You can see her team. Um, I hope they don't talk too much. I think they might. I'm a little nervous. I'm like, everybody just talk a little bit less. Um, you know, we want to get some action in here. This, you know, we spent a lot of money on it. Uh, but I like that she's in her safe space, which gives her probably a little bit. Well, you'll see. She's not, it's not always safe. All right. So... Uh, I like that, by the way, Idris Elba is wearing sandals on this mission. How was that going to go? Uh, like, what? And it's just crazy. You can see all of her original tattoos. She even still has the J there. Uh, I think they work. I, I still liked David Ayer's gang approach instead of mob approach to Batman villains because it's more current day. It's fine with me. Uh, Joel Kinnaman, 
Uh, it's like he was surprised that they were going to film. He seems a little out of shape to me. Uh, so let's see here. That's a really nice street, too. I'm like, oh, what's down here? Maybe we can go get some lunch. Uh, I like this Caribbean, like, tropical setting. And I like, she's like, I can go back inside if you want me to. Oh, it's great. Her delivery is perfect. It's just perfect. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. I hope there's tons of Harley Quinn in this movie. I will be thrilled. All right. Even when her jokes go too far, I don't care. I think it's just really good. Like, for instance, I don't love when she introduced herself to... I'm, I'm also, he was willing to risk everything to save her and they still hadn't met? That, to me, like, kind of ruined the beginning of the joke. But I don't care. She looks great. Look how great she looks there. I'm thrilled. So we get our logo. So that's Savant. And I think all those things, he hits each one when he throws the ball. That's not really Savant. I think James Gunn, from the comics, James Gunn's clearly done whatever he wants with him. Uh, I think Pete Davidson, I actually hope he doesn't die. Pete Davidson is actually a pretty good actor, if you haven't seen King of Staten Island. And I think he fits this movie so perfectly, I'm like, please have him in there more. He even has, he even comes with the tattoos. So everyone's wearing Crocs, which I think is funny because actually in the first Suicide Squad, they cut it, but they did have a shot where Amanda Waller in the trailers was walking around Bell Rev with Crocs on, which I thought was hilarious. So yeah, he's got some toilet paper on him. There he is. That's disgusting. I would not let him out. But that's, I think, the point of that scene. So you can be like, ugh, and then they do let him out. All right. That's Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother. So they're walking around. This is this, you know, you get 10 years. You get 10 years off your sentence per, per, per mission. And I'm, I suspect these guys are all serving pretty long sentences. And of course, if you don't follow the rules, I think Viola Davis's voice over here is excellent. Very Amanda Waller. She'll blow your head off. You know, she's all business because she does, that's all she needs to be. So here's a, I think this is, you know, again, the scene where most of them are going to die. Why is everyone stepping in stuff? And that's disgusting. Some of us are trying to eat while we watch the movie, James Gunn. And that, from the horribly beautiful mind of James Gunn, boy, that was nice of Warner Brothers to do. Like, wow, they are really backing him up. They showed up to support him. I think they're going to be surprised that a lot of you did not. They're like, what? Although I have to say, Weasel or whatever there, for all of his bravado in his, ca in his, in his cell, he's just kind of walking around like normal. Like, that tail is so gross. Ugh, it's gross. But that's the whole point. So... Boy, I hope Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang is a founding member of the Suicide Squad, uh, although Deadshot's not even around right now. Uh, I hope that, as many of you do, that he does not die. He was a really, he was a funny part in the first movie. They even referenced him in Birds of Prey, which I thought was really funny. So we've got Nathan Fillion drinking some pib. That's my shot of Amanda Waller. She looks great there. She's just so happy. The cat that swallowed the canary. She's got her little, she's got her detonator in her hand and she's ready to play. I love it. It's perfect. Uh, let's see here. So we, uh, Harley with the rocket launcher. We saw that before uh, DC fandom. Now, is that is that Sylvester Stallone's voice? He's voicing King Shark. I mean, they're hardly using him at all, but it's very similar to what he what James Gunn did with Vin Diesel voicing Groot in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. So he's like, hey, it's my good luck charm. I got a really famous actor to, to voice a character that doesn't talk much. Hilarious. All right. So he, he really goes to town on that guy. I like this. This sequence to me, I liked. It reminded me of like being in school, you know, in college, you know, and nobody would have to listen to this. It's in some cheap auditorium uh, it has been, you know, been repurposed for something else for them to use it for these briefings. And I like that. I like that she goes through the motions of briefing them. She's like, you know, I did my part. So I guess that's why she doesn't feel too bad when she explo explodes their heads. She's like, if you paid more attention in the briefing, maybe you'd be coming home. Uh, so, uh, I like that, <laughs> I like that he's taking notes. It doesn't look like he's taking a lot. I think that's actually really funny. Uh, I don't get the hand joke. I thought he was actually going to ask a question, which I would have preferred as a joke. Uh, I'd be like, what? Oh, maybe he has a good question. That's pretty good VFX right there, though. He does look like a, like a shark. He has some better moments, though. I like Danielle Melchior a lot. And I like these, like, we're all going to die. And then Polka Dot Man says, I sure hope so. And I loved Idris Elba's reaction to that. I thought that really worked. So this on the roof reminds me so much of the Rocksteady trailer that came out. But luckily, the game is delayed and will not come out before this movie. And you can see on um, Rick Flagg's shirt, it says, Obstacles are Opportunities, which is a hilarious shirt for the leader to wear, which I think is both charming and would also be somewhat annoying to everybody on the team. <laughs> So they're threatening the thinker. They're like, if you do anything, you die. So they're doing all these really cool things. Uh, you know, uh, Rick Flagg and uh, Idris Elba's character are 
clearly struggling for who should be the leader of this team. And so they're playing bad cop, bad cop with him. And then I love that Harley comes in here as the third member. And she says, you know, if you have, we found out you have personalized license plates, you die. And her delivery is excellent. Margot Robbie can be quite funny. And so I just love it. And it's very Harley Quinn and it just works. So I'm very, I'm very happy to see her being like one of the alpha members of the team and done well, done very well. This also reminds me of the scene in the first Suicide Squad movie where they were all getting dressed and she was talking about the voices in her head and stuff like that. It reminds me of that too. And I like that he says, well, I don't think this is an invitation that you can cough with your mouth, or you cough with your, your mouth covered, which is funny, especially today with coronavirus. And it becomes a very timely joke. Now look at King Shark. Did something bit him? It looks like he has been bitten. So I guess something bit back, uh, which probably might be actually pretty funny now that I think about it. But wow, that's going to leave some scars. Uh, I love this shot, though. I mean, like the way that crosses over in front of Idris Elba's face and gets his glare, that looks fantastic. And I do love our two women on the team so much. I mean, that's really, as I said, selling this for me. I'm like, they're fantastic. I'm so happy. Hooray. So let's see here. So we go along. They're entering this compound. It's a South American country, basically. They have to go in there and take care of it. And they find out, well, I don't want to give everything away. We've talked about it before if you've been following my coverage of this. I did not like this joke. So they're walking through the jungle and, and, you know, Peacemaker's like, why aren't I challenged a challenge for leader? And, you know, they have an inappropriate joke. And the only thing that saves it, I think, is Ratcatcher at the end saying, why would someone do that to the beach? And I did like Peacemaker's retort, who knows why mad men do the things they do. That to me worked. So, so the second half worked. The first half, I didn't think was funny enough to be as, as an R-rated a joke as it was. So they're partying. Eh, but it's very Suicide Squad from the comics. So, of course, they have to blow off some steam. So they're dying. I think that's great, you know, to save the world. That's very funny. I think that's very clever. Now, look at this. They jump. There's no way they can jump like that. Unless, I mean, unless this, Har this Har version of Harley is enhanced. She's supposed to be boosted a little bit in the comic books by Poison Ivy. Um, but how's Polka Dot Man doing that? But I've got worried. Look, Idris Elba tripped. No, Idris Elba. So they're dying to save the world. Very funny. That's Alice Bra Braga for just a moment. She's like, damn it, one of these comic book movies is going to work! Because she, of course, was in New Mutants. But look, you have a quick shot here of uh, Idris Elba going for trying to kill Waller. Uh, so it's a little bit one-on-one -on -one with Waller, just like Will Smith got to do in the first movie. My favorite scene in the first film, actually. Uh, and look, she doesn't even flinch. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. I wonder why he doesn't kill her. She looks a little scared. She looks a little scared. Now look at that. I think the whole trailer is, red, well, the joke's for too, for Red Band. But so King Shark could rip that, rip that guy apart. But, you know, I don't know. Do you think this, like, were you like, yeah, I'm so glad this was in the trailer. I don't really need it, to be honest with you. So he's, he's like, suicide. It's like someone said, this is a suicide squad, or that's suicide. And he's like, that's kind of our thing, which I think that, I like that line. I wonder if that's Harley hanging onto the helicopter, because she did that in the first movie too, which I also liked was one of my favorite scenes. You know, it's uh, gymnastic bars. So I think that's very clever. We'll see who that ends up being. I think it, I don't know. Doesn't she fire a rocket launcher at it too? So she can't be in two places at once. We'll see. So it's really going out of control. And now we cut to Harley here with the, this. That's fantastic. And I love that. That mimics her poster with the flowers, which is really, really great. She looks fantastic. I, I mean, again, if a Harley Quinn shot comes along in this movie, I'm quite happy with it, as you can see. But it's just fantastic. So... I like this exchange. He's like, I'm going to get you out of here alive. Oh, I forgot to say, I love that Idris Elba gets to keep his British accent. I think that's great. And I love that Daniela Melchior says, I'm going to get you out alive. And she did it really nicely. She did it demurely. I thought it was like, you know, it wasn't like a in your face, kind of like shutting him down kind of a thing. It was just a really gentle, like sweet, like, hey, we're peers. You know, I, I, it was just per pitch, per it was pitch perfect. It was pitch perfect. So I love that. So then... Starro, uh, by the way, I'm very glad someone gave King Shark pants. And they're like, what, like those funny like uh, uh, shorts that you wear on vacations for guys. I think that's hilarious. Uh, I forget what they're called, but it's very funny. And so I'm sure there'll be some inappropriate jokes about Starro's tentacles. Uh, Harley looks great there too. She looks amazing. She really blends in to the ground uh, with her skin color. So that's fantastic. 
And he's got, we got some kaiju action here. And look how, like, he looks so ridiculous back there, Starro. He looks ridiculous. I guess they don't mind giving it away. I wonder, is this a Batman v Superman moment where they gave away Doomsday? Or you're like, did you have to put Starro in the trailer? I mean, we all saw the mini Starro in the, in the stuff from DC fandom, but did they have to show full Starro? I don't know. He looks, he's like, I don't, I gotta say, to be fair, he looks like what Starro would look like in live action because he's just a giant starfish with a giant eye in the middle. But look, there he's walking, and I like Idris Elba being like, okay, that, you know, that's just the day. And so the Suicide Squad, and then they have this rain joke, and I gotta tell you, she looks gorgeous there, but I didn't think the joke was funny enough to be so R-rated. That joke is, I think, kind of X-rated, so I don't think it was necessary, even though Margot Robbie did a wonderful job with it. I preferred the shot where she's eating like an apple or something. I thought that was still sexy, but in a, in a way that everybody, you know, but nobody had to feel like, mm, what? So, fantastic. Oh, and look, Zack Snyder and Deborah Snyder are executive producers. So, um, it's got that going for it. So, what did you think? Uh, again, I mean, I can see why some of your complaints are there, but I'm just, so I'm in the Harley Quinn is in, the, in this and looks great camp. So, that's my breakdown. I can't wait to hear your own thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.